involved in all of that prehistory so much, but what I've heard him say is he had a Sabbath school teacher in England who kept repeating to him that he would have a very, uh, a lot to offer in ministry. And this was probably the first time he started thinking about this because he had always thought of himself as being a missionary doctor to go back to Africa and help the people that he had been, where he had been born. Um, I guess the first church was in Morris, Michigan. He was a intern there, and actually um, more out of necessity than anything else. He was at Andrews and I was at Michigan State University getting a master's degree. Those are about two hours apart geographically. And our finances were very limited and the Michigan Conference said, well, we have this little church up here near Michigan State University and we would like someone to come and preach there on Sabbath. You wouldn't have to do anything else, just come and preach. And we'll pay your gas mileage if you'll do that. Well, that was perfect because then he could come up and we could see each other every weekend at the conference's expense, thank you very much. And so he preached at the Morris Country Church. Well, David had always committed to go to the United Kingdom because he felt that there were very few Adventist churches there and he wanted to put his talents in that arena. And so when we um, were ready to move on from seminary, he made his application and they invited him to come to Scotland to help in evangelistic meetings that were being held in Perth, which is uh, about the center of Scotland. So, and when we moved into our parsonage there, there was no central heating. That was considered a luxury. We had a fireplace in the living room and that was to heat the whole house. Now the, fire, the room, I think, was a, like about 10 by 10 in size with this little fireplace. And there was a dining room, a kitchen, three bedrooms, a bathroom. And that one little fireplace was to heat everything. Well, we had six people in our congregation. And <laughs> that was interesting in itself. My two children consisted of the entire Sabbath school. Oh, no, correction, there was one other little boy. And so we had three in the Sabbath school. In Britain at that particular time, they did not have a car allowance, especially for young pastors. I think maybe the senior pastors had a car allowance, because I think one of the six pastors did have a car. But David had a bus allowance because he was a newbie, and he thought that he could probably cover his territory better if he could use his bus allowance to buy a bicycle. So he approached the conference and asked him, could he use that um, bus allowance to make time payments on a bicycle, which he then bought. He also bought a poncho, a vinyl poncho, that he wore over the bicycle because it rained, as we mentioned, every day in Scotland. And so he and his poncho and bicycle would drive around in the town daily um, to do his door knocking. To, I guess the memories that are really the ones that stay with you are the people. The people that came to find Jesus, which this uh, Indian girl and her son both were baptized, and a number of other people that were baptized as a result of that. And also, just really getting in perspective what life is about, that it's not really about all the things and the comforts, although when you don't have them, you tend to think about them more, but um, the people that we met, the neighbors that we met, I still write to some of the families there, and we visit them when we go back to Scotland. So. The people are the, are the things that are the best memories and most precious to us.